Ah! Oh, God! I didn't see you there. Woo! Don't sneak up on me like that. <laughs> Announce yourself next time! Hi! You caught me editing my next video. And I'm kind of bored. I want to take a little bit of a break, so I figured why don't we do a painting. But I was uh, struggling a little bit trying to figure out what, but then this gave me an idea. It's very colorful, and I was thinking about maybe painting a skyline. So let's put those two together and paint Chicago's colorful skyline. Let's do it. Welcome back. And again, as always, thank you for deciding to spend a few minutes of your day with me. It is always much appreciated. And like usual, I don't want to waste any of it. However, before we jump into this, we need to sort of familiarize ourselves with just a couple of things to accomplish this painting. Now, today what we're going to do is work with what's referred to as a limited palette. Now, those colors today in that limited palette will be our basic primary colors of yellow, red, and blue, with just a pinch of white thrown in. Now, in this painting, we're gonna create a bit of a gradient, but to do that, we have to have colors that go from dark to light. Now, to do that, we have to start with our lighter colors, and since we're building a skyline that's gonna go all over the place, uh, we don't wanna just do one color here, one color here, one color here. We wanna pizzazz it up a little bit and push some colors back and forth. So, when we do this, I encourage you to pick your colors first. Um, if you know that you're going to go with a yellow first or a blue first or a red first, start there and get all of the parts that need to go in that color done first. And, and we'll see it as soon as we start, okay? But let's look at the brushes we're going to use today. So today these brushes are really simple. We have two flat brushes, one large, one medium, our bright brush and our small round brush. Now, you can use really any type. I'm just using, a, you can actually use one flat if you want to, but I'm using a flat a bright and a round. Pretty simple, one large, one medium, one small, really no pressure here. And, and you can kind of use interchangeably the flat and the bright together. You'll see why I have them specifically laid out the way that I do when we get toward the end of the painting. Now, if you can see, this canvas is not primed. And the beauty of this is because it's a simple painting, really only using the primary colors, and the way that we're gonna do it, we really don't need to prime the canvas, but let's not waste any more time. So what we're going to do first is we're going to grab our large brush. So with this skyline on here, let's create a bit of a gradient from a lighter color to a darker color. So we're gonna start with our lightest color, which in this case, in the primaries, will be yellow. So we're gonna grab just a little bit of yellow here, right? It's not too much. And let's start, since this is a Chicago skyline, let's start with our most impactful building, which is the Sears Tower. Yes, I said the Sears Tower, and I stick by that. I'm never going to call it the Willis Tower. It's never going to happen. I'm old school like that. All right, so we're going to start. Let's, um, let's start it somewhere around right here. It doesn't really matter necessarily where exactly, but what we want to do is part of the reason we're using this flat brush is because we want to use its edge that specific way. Now with our Sears tower, we want to start with the very top and we want to put it kind of high. So we're just going to do a little bit of a tap like that. We don't want to go too far across, okay? We want to keep it pretty lean in this respect. So we're just going to tap. It's going to be a lot of tapping in this painting. All right, see that? And we're just kind of tapping the color in. Not smashing it, not yet at least. Well, let's go grab a little bit more yellow and let's uh, let's sort of pull it since we have to use this color for a lot we want this to be our base so we're gonna start smashing it we're gonna pull some of that color down maybe it comes around here a little bit all right see how I kind of kept the edge of it it's straight here but then it's kind of loose maybe there's some up here like this maybe there's a building that lives over here somewhere I don't know and then uh, we'll pull it down See how I start to smash it in now. Right, see that? Smashing it, letting that brush fray up. Alright. So let's go. You know what? I want to put let's put one here. Alright, maybe there's one that lives kind of like this. Alright. Alright, maybe they this one kind of flows this. 
this way. Now, it's very important that when we do this, to create a smoky base, right? We don't want the, the edges to be jagged like that. What we want to do is make sure that the brush is facing down and we're going to tap it like this. It's going to create a bit of a smokier end. And you'll see it a little bit easier when we get into the darker colors. Okay, so let's add just a little bit of color to this. Actually, you know what? Let's put one more here. I like the way that's going to look. All right, this will kind of make sense in a second. Now, with our Sears Tower, the building kind of goes in sections. So it's like this, and like this, and like this. So we want to create that a little bit. So we're going to pull this up just a little bit more. Juts out a little bit more here. All right, same concept. And we're gonna smash it. Pretty simple. Okay. Now to create that gradient, what we want to make sure that we do is not to clean this brush off. So whether you're going to use a blue or a red uh, and their corresponding complementary colors will come out. So we're going to use a red here in this one. Let's use red. And when we use it, the orange is going to come out, but it's going to be very dark at the top. And that's kind of what we want. So let's grab a little bit of red. And we're going to start right at the top. We're going to do exactly the same thing we just did before. And as we tap it from here, it's going to be very red at the top. But as we work our way down, you'll see that it starts to become a bit more orange. All right, so again, cover all that up. All right, see how it becomes just a pinch more orange as we work our way down. And be loose with it too. Don't be so rigid, be just at the edges. But it's sort of an abstract idea of a skyline so go abstract with it All right see how we pull that down and the more I do that the more orange it becomes it's very red at the top very orange as we get down here and if you want it to be even more orange or, or a lighter if you will grab a little bit of yellow much of that off and then turn it upside down to create that smoky area see that nice right all right so let's grab a little bit more let's make uh, maybe this one yeah, this one's a little bit less red a little bit more orange in this one here all right kind of pull this down a little bit Okay, let's make, let's do one more little orange one. A little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. Pull that together over here so it's not as aggressive. A little bit more orange on this one. Yeah, why not? Oh, see that? Hit that bottom part, turn it upside down so it gets a little bit more smoky. Like that. A little bit more smoky area on this one here. Kind of bleeds in together. We like that. That looks nice. All right. Cool. All right, so let's grab another color. But before we do that, now we do have to clean this off. If we're going to create... So the only other color we have left is blue, obviously. But we can make a blue and green in different sections. So we're going to do that. But if we use this orange color, it's going to create this very muddy brown, which we really don't want. So let's clean off our brush. All right, and we're going to grab just a little bit of blue. Now, this blue is incredibly overwhelming, and it's going to go a very long way. So we really only need just a few taps somewhere along the top, kind of like this. And I'm going to show you how to pull this blue down, because it's, like I said, it's incredibly overwhelming. But you can also already start to see it turn green. Right. We're going to do that. Smash that in a little bit. 
make it so it's not as aggressive of a transition between the edges. Then we're going to go back, grab a little bit more yellow. Very simple, very, very simple. And then we'll start on the blue, but not at the top. We want to maintain some of that darker color. And as I do this, you'll see that it starts to pull that blue a little bit more with it. Now with this, you're going to need to kind of go back and forth to grab a little bit more. Let's, uh, you know what, let's sort of pull it down this way. It's smoky in this area here. All right, so now you can see it a little bit better with that green. You kind of turn it upside down. You know, it becomes a bit more smoky in those areas. Let me see that. Grab a little bit more yellow. Yeah, maybe it kind of comes up here, bleeds it together. I don't know. It's your painting. You figure out where you want it to go. I'm not here to dictate what looks good to you, only to help you through the steps. It's your painting. Remember that. All right, so let's tap down here a little bit. Let's cover up some of this yellow. All right, there's some that works its way this way. Cover up some of that white. All right. I don't know. Maybe there's a maybe there's one that lives over this way. There's a green one, or maybe we'll make a blue one somewhere over here. You know what? Let's do that actually. Let's grab some blue and we'll make a blue one that kind of lives over here. Okay, maybe something like this. Grab a little bit more blue. yellow, pull it down. Remember, we want to plan this out so we're not just grabbing any color we want. We want to sort of put these buildings where we want them before we grade the grading. All right, let's give this blue a little bit more transition. All right, maybe this one here too. A little bit more. See that? Turn it upside down. Cuts this way a little bit. I don't know. You know, and leave spaces. Leave spaces for other colors, like here and here. And if we want, we're going to cut them through in different areas. So leave spaces here, too. All right, let's clean off our brush. Let's get some red buildings in here. I like these blue ones, but let's go with a little bit of red. All right, so let's put... Let's put a red one. Let's stick a really bright wet red wed one. Wed run. Red one. Right. Um, oh gosh. Maybe we'll put one. Maybe we'll put one right here. Super bright. Look at that one. Beautiful. Give it a little contrast. Right, maybe it kind of cuts this way into the green a little bit. Not too much. We don't want to pull those colors together, not just yet at least. All right, let's put the red one right there. Perfect. All right, so you know what, let's, let's smash this in here, create a little bit of distance, right? Now, what happens is you can pull these colors together and if you notice, this one looks like it's in the front, but let's pull this one. If we just take this and we'll pull it over this way. You hear that? It, normally we don't want that, but for this painting, this way. All right, grab a little bit more. Actually, let's grab a little bit of yellow and even that color out a little bit. It's super aggressive. So let's grab this. We'll clean our brush off. Now we're going to pull a little bit this way just to make it a bit more um, of a gradient. So we're going to grab that yellow with a clean, dry brush. We'll grab that yellow and we'll come down and pull it over this way a little bit. So, you know, pulling that color, it's in, pushes through, a bit too aggressive. Yeah, we'll see if it like that. All right, create that gradient, right? This one's in the front. We want it to kind of lose over here somewhere, but we don't want to smash too much together, lose the color. All right, that's really pretty. I like where that's at. Sometimes you just gotta take a step back, look at it from a different perspective, right? Cool, let's put another red one in there. 
let's put this. I don't like this space here. Let's put another one there. We can actually even make that a little bit more orange. It's a little bit darker in here. Let me kind of, uh, maybe it's low. There's a low one. Cuts this way a little bit. All right. Clean off our brush again so we can give that just a bit more of a transition. Let's say that's the beauty of using synthetic brushes. You can just continue to clean them off. We don't get that effect when we use natural bristle. I'm just going to turn it upside down. Helps create that nice little gradient there. Now, if you notice, I haven't switched brushes yet. I've just kind of been playing around with this one brush, and that's the beauty of a painting like this. Even though it seems difficult and it's all over the place, it's actually pretty simple. We've only been using this one brush. Really, there's really no exact technique to this. You can kind of go for it with this one. That's one of the things I love about a painting like this. So much, so here, look at this. This is a good example of what I mean. You ready? Watch my face, okay? even on the canvas you see what I mean perfect all right let's uh, even that out a little bit here all right maybe I might go with the ducks a little behind there why not looks great you know what I want to do I'm gonna expand this one here a little bit and this one kind of cuts up this way a little bit down here maybe that one over see how I replaced it just place that one right back in front super easy <sighs> cool all right let's um, let's change up the colors a little bit you know what I kind of want in here some purple right, we might as well make as many of the colors that we can with our primaries while we're at it right so let's throw a little bit of purple here so we're gonna take this blue first a little bit of blue Let's, um, oh goodness, let's go here. Let's throw one right here, right in the front. This one's going to look right here. Right there. Now, again, just like we did with the green, we want to grab, since that color's so overwhelming, we want to grab a little bit of red now. And as we grab that red, you'll notice that it starts to turn to a bit of a purple. Right, see that? That comes down this way a little bit. I don't know. into that nice transition between our purple and our blue. All right, get that smoky area going. Don't forget about that. That one cuts this way. There's a little bit down here. I don't know. All right, see that? Gosh, that's beautiful. Okay, let's do another one. Let's, uh, good. we gotta fill this area over here, so we might as well grab that blue. Let's, you know what, actually, let's create a little bit of distance here. Uh, a little perspective for you, if you will, right? So we'll put this blue one right here. And it kind of goes like this. Smashed in there. Now we want that to transition into a bit of a purple. But because it's a bit of a purple, let's soften it up. And make it a bit more red as it works its way down. Maybe it kind of lives this way here a little bit. Okay, a bit more red here at the bottom. I'm going to show you why we're doing this here in a second. Maybe it kind of lives this way. I don't know. It's a little smokier here. It comes around this way. All right. All right, so let's soften that up. Here's a, a nice, unique way to soften up transitions like this if you don't want to use too much color. So we go in with what's called a technique called dry brushing. Now, what dry brushing does is you take a clean, dry brush and you sort of smash the colors together to create a color transition rather than a texture transition. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. As I push this together, it's going to take those colors that clean dry brush not, no paint you might catch a little bit of paint off of the canvas which is fine but we want no paint on this brush when we do this just so it can catch and move around see that okay, creates that nice 
this little smoke here. See how I'm still upside down with it? And we're creating a nice color transition. These little taps, I'm gonna <laughs> like that sound. It's a good sound. And if you need any paint, go into the paint that's already there. Right? See how I can pull some of that down a little? Look at that. That is pretty. Let's cross that over here a little bit. Now, because we went over this way and we have all our primary colors right in this one little section, we need to even them out, balance them a little bit. Now, to do that, we have to do both techniques of dry brushing and adding a little bit of paint because we want both a color transition and a texture transition here, okay? So we'll start with a clean, dry brush, really just smash it in. And you'll see as I do that, that it pulls some of that paint out a little bit, if you could see that right there. Pull some of that paint, and we're gonna grab our lightest color again, the one we started with, our base, and we're gonna sort of push that in. And what that does is help pull these colors back together, create one nice little color profile right here at the bottom. little bit of a separation. We like that. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Very little bit here and there. Very little bit. Nothing crazy. Can you see that? Oh, that's pretty. All right. We can even pull a little bit of that color in. Look at that. That is nice. Like I said before, we don't want it to be exact or we don't want a straight line that goes all the way across. That's going to look really weird. We want it to be all over the place and kind of funky. That's the point. All right, let's, um, you know what, let's clean this off. I want to add a little bit more to this, these two spaces here. So I'm going to grab our paper towel. I'm going to grab a clean one here. Clean this off. Uh, let's go, let's go a little bit of red here on both sides. We'll make one red, one purple. We'll transition into a nice purple, but we, we've got all about the same size colors. So let's, um, let's go a little bit thinner with this one. Now to do that, we have to sort of create where the building lives first. So we'll grab the edge, right? Maybe it cuts down this way. We'll tap a little bit. See how I'm using the brush? See how it's bending like that? Right? See that? No, it's bending like that, but it's still pretty sharp. All right, maybe it comes out a little bit this way. Oh gosh, I don't know. It crosses over here, maybe. Keep it fun. Keep it loose. Don't take it too seriously. Let's pull this one up here a little. Now, if you've noticed, the only building that I've distinctly put in was our main building. And the reason is, if you try and put these buildings in here very specifically, the brain is going to take over because the brain kind of knows what a city skyline looks like, especially specific ones with very, um, very noticeable buildings. So if you try to make every building very specific, what's going to happen is your brain's going to take over and go, that's not what that looks like, if you will. So let's just put that there. Put that one there. Okay. Let's clean this off. All right. Let's put one more building. Let's cover this little area in. We'll just make it a blue one. It kind of cuts around this way. Yeah, it should. Yeah. Over here, right there. Nothing too serious. Just covering up that area. That's all we're doing. red to help smooth the transition, from blue to purple, and there we go. I kind of like where we're at there. All right, so let's leave that. That's where our skyline's going to go. We can put that large brush to the side, and what we're going to do now is we're going to switch now to our right brush. Now, remember, uh, if you've watched any of the previous videos, you'll know that our right brush uh, it's designed for two reasons. One, and unlike the large brush we were using, it's designed to spread a small amount of paint very boldly across the canvas. And two, and more important to what we're going to do here, is it makes very flat lines and very, very sharp edges. 
but you have to press very lightly. So we have a pretty nondescript uh, sort of skyline, but we want to tighten it up a little bit because it's very loose and very abstract. So to do that, we're sort of cheating it by adding a little bit of white. And we're going to build in where these buildings live. I don't know if he's built it right. So here, I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna make a little bit of a line here. All right, and then there's another one that kind of crosses this way. You see what I mean? And we're going to build that all the way through. Now, the important part here is to not be too um, specific with where you put these, right? So I like this, right? Got a one here, so it cuts this way. Very loose, very loose idea of where these live. We're actually, I'll, I'll show you how fast we're gonna do this. This is so simple. Watch this, all right? Create a few, maybe there's one that lives here. There's a line here. Maybe there's this building back here that cuts this way. All right, maybe it cuts one here. Maybe there's one down here, kind of lives like this. Here, uh, there's one up here. All right, see how simple that is? Very simple, very easy. And if some of that color bleeds through, perfect. We want that. All right, a little bit here. And make them different lengths, right? You can also put a few down here below, right? Maybe there's one like this. Just cut through them. Very easy, very simple. Right over here, like that. Don't take it too seriously. See how fast I'm going? You're not really paying attention exactly where these are supposed to go. You're just kind of going for it. That's sort of the idea, right? Make sure you cut some behind. I don't know, something like that. Perfect. All right. So, what we need to do now and don't do any of this yet, right? We are, with our Sears Tower, they've got those two antennas. We're not going to put those in just yet. All right. Uh, maybe I'll put one up here like this. It's that way. I don't know. All right. Let's put... So any city you would go into has windows, right? So let's put some windows in here. Now, here is the thing about windows. You do not want to put them in very specifically. You want to scatter or stagger them. Because think of it this way. If you went to a city at night and you looked into the buildings, not every single light on every single building would be on, right? So we don't want to do that. So I, I recommend be very, very loose with your idea of where these lights belong and sort of switch it up a little. All right, maybe they kind of work like this. There's one here, something like that, okay? And you can do that all the way through. That's very simple. It's an abstract building, so play around with it. This is a different building in front here. Why not? Oops, I love that. Very quick, very simple, very easy. There you go. All right, now with our antennas, part of the reason we waited. Now, you might be asking yourself, why didn't we just put them in when we had the color? It's a good question. So with the antennas, what happens to people, and I see, is when they put the antenna in, they do it too close to the middle with the first one, and then they don't have enough room for the second one. So what I recommend, so we're gonna grab a little bit of ye yellow and a little bit of red, 
just to make that lighter orange color. You'll see that. Match the color slightly. We're going to put it in. Now, you want to go oops, as close to the edge as possible. So something like this. And another one right here. This way. It sort of stays the same. Right? See, the distance is pretty equal there. So a little bit of red creating this gradient inside. Sweet. All right, let's clean off our brush. We'll add some of these lines in there just to give it a bit of um, a bit of depth. All right, so grab that white very lightly. Grab a little bit more. See that very lightly, just like that. Okay. So when I was thinking about doing this painting, I was thinking, what more can we add to this? So we have all of this blank space here and all of this blank space here. What we want to do is make sure that we push in some color. We don't want to leave all of that area. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add splatter marks. Now, <laughs> with splatter marks, this is where it gets a little dangerous because if, you if you're working in an area you don't want to get paint on, it can be very messy. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but there's really only one way to splatter, and that's to splatter paint everywhere. But I'm going to show you a very specific way to do it. So what we want to do is grab a clean, dry brush. Now, I've got a brush here that has a lot of spring in it. Okay, see that? There's a lot of spring in that brush. And it's easier if you use something with a lot of spring to it. But what we want to have is make sure that this brush is a little wet. Just a little bit. We want just a very little bit of water right off the edge of the brush. Not too much. And then we're going to go into our color. Uh, let's go red first. All right. See how that's a little bit watery? Grab it on both sides, a little bit watery. And then I want you to hold the brush like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your thumb, you're going to take it sideways, because the splatter marks are going to come from the top. They're not going to come from this way. So if you try to go like this, you're going to whoosh, right to the ceiling. You don't want to do that. So the splatter marks are going to come from here. What you're going to do is you're going to turn it on its side. Let me turn on this side here, and you're going to just lick. See that? Little flick. Let's create, let's grab some yellow, right? Clean off your thumb so you don't get any of that paint anywhere else. A little splatter marks. All right, a little bit of water right off the edge of the brush, a little bit of yellow. Kind of watery here. Grab that brush, hold it like this, turn it to the side, lick. You can even do it on the buildings too. That yellow is going to be a little tough to see, but that's okay. You'll see it when you get close. All right, and grab, remember to clean off your thumb or your finger, right, if you're using hand like this. A little bit more water. Let's grab some blue. A little bit of water here. Flick, flick, flick. Ah, there we go. So we get a pinch more water. See all those splatter marks? Those are beautiful. Oh, got it on my arm. All right. You know what? I actually think that's good. I think we can call it a day on this one. What do you think? Pretty simple, pretty easy, right? Nothing really to it. It's a bunch of smashes all over the canvas, a few straight lines, and a few splatter marks. But there's one thing left to do. If you remember from previous videos, that is to sign it. That is how you know, right? You're putting your stamp on it. You're saying to yourself, you know what? I'm done with this painting. I'm not going to touch it anymore. So because this is white down here, and we're going to sign it usually, that's the most popular part, bottom right, let's do it in, let's do it in a little bit of a blue, but a white, right? For that light blue, something like that. And there you go. That's it. Well, again, thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me. It was my pleasure. Uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe if that's something that you want to do. Uh, hit the bell icon if you want to get notified of other videos coming out, or you can actually watch some more right now if you wanted to. But that concludes the video for today. I will see you in the next one. Peace.